Yeah, I've heard the story. No, it's true. It was a long time ago. The house burned down. The parents died, but their kids' bodies were never found. Dun dun dun! You guys, stop! You're creeping me out. Don't worry. I'll protect you. I'm serious. Get a broom. Those kids used to play in these woods, but one by one, they disappeared. People used to come up here and leave stuff in case the kids were still alive. They left candles burning, but the candles moved in the Stop night. Stop it! Nobody would let their kids come up here after that. Like that guy last year? Like he didn't just skip town or something? Don't tell me you're buying this. No. I know one of the kids he was with. They were up here playing Wick For too. real? Would you calm down? What was that? Someone's out there. Can we go back now? Quiet. Please? We're here. Don't take the blindfold off until we're gone. Good luck. See you at 6 a.m. If you live... <laughs> The Weaver family consists of Tim, Tom, Benny, Caleb, Lillian, John, and Mary, many of whom serve as antagonists in Wick. The Weaver family serves as the central focus of Wick. Most of their backstory is revealed in a newspaper article received as evidence after finishing 1 a.m. They are estimated to have lived during the 1920s in a pioneer homestead on Mount Todd. The members include the parents Lieutenant John Weaver and Mary Weaver along with five children. Benny, age 14, Caleb, age 9, Lillian, age 5, and the twins Tim and Tom, whose ages are unknown. John has served during World War I and he returned home in February of 1918, earning the Silver War badge. It is suggested that he suffered from wounds inflicted on him in the war. It is unknown if John and Mary had their children before John left for war or after. On Tuesday, June 4th, 1924, the homestead was burned down in a mysterious fire with the mother's body being reduced to ash, the father possibly having hanged himself, and the children missing. There was an investigation into their disappearance, but the children's bodies were never found. The children now serve as the antagonists in Wick, making short work of any who journey into the forest. It is unknown how the Weaver children became murderous supernatural beings that hunt children at night. This has apparently been going on for many years, hinted at by the interview with the local campers from the area map evidence. In modern times, similar to the Weaver children's disappearance, the children who venture into the forest are never found. Travis Burton was one of these missing children. Depending on the ending, the player character will also become a victim. Mary, the children's mother, also has a spiritual presence. Her ghost can be seen in an illusion of the house appearing as it was during the fire. She can be seen crying and staggering as she burns to death, letting out her last scream. Viewing this gives the player the toasty achievement. Mary will also appear in the achievement Mommy Dearest in No Way Out. John's spiritual presence is shown in the woodshed. The player has the possibility of seeing the hanging noose in chair or an apparition of John hanging himself which can be only seen in No Way Out. Tim is the first of many enemies the player will encounter, appearing as early as midnight. He is a masked child who looks to be approximately in his early teens and is the twin brother of Tom. He wears a white mask with a smiling expression carved into it along with a schoolboy uniform. Tim is notorious for toying with his victims before killing them. This toying often involves briefly manifesting himself for a split second or sprinting past them in an attempt to unsettle them. When running past the player, he appears transparent. Sometimes, while the player is moving around, they will hear his footsteps behind them. He will also wheeze loudly. Tim has two animations he performs before beginning the pursuit. He will either hold his mask face and throw his head back as he coughs or crouch down on one knee and hold his arms back as he shudders, wheezes, and hisses. While the player should not look back towards him during the chase, if timed properly, there is a brief instance to catch him ceasing his trail. Then the player will be able to watch him stop and fade away within a green flame. When Tim catches the player, there are many ways he will kill them. In most animations, he initiates the attack by punching the player with his right fist, knocking the player to the ground. He will then turn the player around to face him. From this point, Tim kills the player using one of these methods. 
He stumps the player's head in. He grabs the protagonist by the collar and beats their head against the ground multiple times. He grabs the player by the collar with his right hand and punches them with his left fist. Then he will lift the player a bit and confusingly look at them before knocking the protagonist out with a sudden headbutt. In one death animation, Tim would not start off with a punch. Instead, he would distract the player and stare at them. Abruptly, Tom will appear to push the player to the ground. They will both look at the player and outreach their hands as the protagonist fades out of consciousness. It should be noted that this is technically a Tim death animation as it is activated only by getting caught by Tim. And lastly, Tim will immediately headbutt Sam, knocking him unconscious. Tim has curtain hair, reddish brown in color. His skin has a reddish hue. He has small scratches on his legs, hands, and face. He is also quite thin. Tim wears a presumably handcrafted mask, very similar to the one worn by Tom, except unbroken with a large smile carved into it. The schoolboy uniform worn by Tim is unknown in origin. It consists of a green plaid sweater vest with a white long sleeved undershirt. A school crest patch is on the left breast of the vest. He has a neatly made necktie and the undershirt is tucked into his brown shorts. He wears a pair of saddle shoes and socks. Tim frequently makes wheezing sounds while he is stalking or chasing the player. He has a distinct quirk in which he will cock his head to the side while looking at the player. Tom is either the third or fourth child that is encountered, appearing at 2 a.m. and after. Tom is a mangled mess of a human being whose body somewhat resembles that of a child in his early teens. He is the twin brother of Tim. He wears a white broken mask with a harsh frown carved into it along with a tattered schoolboy uniform. Tom, being the twin of Tim, looks very much like him, but there are many key differences in his appearance. Tom has messy, dark brown hair with a right part. His bangs cover his mask right eye. The mask he wears is similar to Tim's, but it is cracked in two places and portrays a sad face. The large crack on the mask's left eye reveals a brown colored eye. His skin is gray in color, and his body is riddled with many injuries. Besides the typical scrapes and cuts as with his siblings, most if not all of his bones appear broken in some way. His spine seems to be severely bent and the bone is exposed on his right elbow and left leg. His right knee bends at an odd angle causing his foot to turn inward. His left foot is limp and he stands on his ankle. What? Both Tom and Tim make coughing and wheezing sounds, but Tom's are more intense. Other sounds Tom makes are herald breathing, growling, and what seems to be laughing. Tom's idle animation consists of him twitching and shuddering constantly. He makes loud cracking noises whenever he moves his limbs. He usually holds the same pose with his head limply lying on his right shoulder.
Benny's girth is his most immediately noticeable feature, along with lacking any signs of decay. He has a hunched posture. His short brown hair is combed to the side and the hair on the sides of his head is shaved. He has large brown eyes and freckles on his cheeks. He has crooked teeth and is always seen with his mouth slightly ajar. Benny wears orange and yellow striped shirt with blue overalls. The overall strap on his left side is unfastened. He is also barefoot. Like his siblings, Benny has a new look and no way out. He is still wearing overalls, but is now shirtless and covered in bloody wounds, stitches, and boils. Unlike his previous look, he now is completely bald and has gray skin. Like Tom, Benny has a trail of wounds going down his neck. Also like Tom, he is wearing a broken mask that is poorly held together with stitches. The mask has rosy cheeks and blue eye shadow. He also has piercing white eyes and small pupils. What is up everyone, Tay here, the host and creator of History Behind the Horror, and I'm making this quick little part to let you guys know that this is the end of the episode, but this isn't the end of Wick completely. I just found out some new information about this game that goes into way more detail into each character of this game, and I'm going to be adding that into a separate video since this video is already going past 10 minutes, and adding that information will make this episode way longer than what I want it to be. So just sit tight everyone, and we will be back very soon for the next episode of wick if you guys did enjoy this episode and you would like to see part two of wick please make sure to hit the like button hit the bell notification so you always stay up to date when a new video is coming out and put in the comment section for what episode you would like to see next once wick is over with so with that being said thank you guys so much for tuning in and i will see you on the next episode of history behind the horror